most of the food here. We plant forage barley for the cows, forage corn, silos of different crops, and we also grow canola and soybeans. Depending on the price, sometimes we extrude the soy and use it in the milk production system. We have 3.80% fat and 3.50% protein. We are talking about crude protein, not true protein. Approximately between 285,000 and 320,000 somatic cells per milliliter. It's a big challenge and we are looking to improve this with some genetic enhancement and we also need to improve some facilities. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now and he will continue recording on farms around the world. Currently, we are averaging 27.5 liters per cow. We hope in the coming days to reach 28 or 29 liters. The goal is to maintain these levels, as it is where we achieve a margin, an extra profit. And how much fat does the milk have? We have 3.80% fat and 3.50% protein. We are talking about crude protein, not true protein. The installation was done in 2014. It is a rotary milking parlor with 50 places. How many milkings do you do? Three? No, we do two milkings. We always try to do things in the most friendly way with the least number of tasks possible. This applies both to the people who work here and to the cows. We try to simplify as much as possible, sometimes maybe sacrificing a bit of productivity. But we see this sector as more than just a business. It's a way of life for us. And the way to sustain it over time is to do something you can maintain. Often striving for maximum efficiency can lead to wear and tear on people, the staff, and ourselves. It's important to think that it needs to be sustainable. It doesn't mean that we don't strive for continuous improvement. The quality of life also needs to improve. Of course, yes, it's about continuous improvement. For example, we improve something and try to ensure that it is maintained. We don't try to go back because we believe that all farms have many things to improve. There's always something we can progress in, but we aim for this improvement to be continuous whenever possible. Yes, always thinking long term. Yes, yes, always thinking long term. Thinking for over 100 years. Yes, yes, we have milked up to 620 cows here. We had very rapid growth, but sometimes it's difficult to sustain that growth. So we scaled back to adjust to be more efficient. Now we focus on efficiency in all aspects. Part of this was what we learned from the courses. Even though I am an agronomist, it's necessary to learn more about feeding, formulating diets, formulating rations. We are more focused on efficiency, for example, trying to use the minimum amount of purchased inputs. We formulate the salts here, we formulate the rations here. Who does the formulation? I do the formulation, yes. We also produce most of the food here. We plant forage barley for the cows, forage corn, silos of different crops, and we also grow canola and soybeans. Depending on the price, sometimes we extrude the soy and use it in the milk production system or sell it. And now, for example, the price is good, so we sell it and buy other inputs, trying to balance everything so it works well. Right, right. And where is the composting facility located? There we have one. We start at 3 p.m. here. We can go over there. Ah, the cows from the compost barn just left. They are the ones entering now. Is it very similar to the systems in Argentina or not? There they call it a dry bed. Yes, here we call it a hotbed or compost barn, but actually what we are aiming for is comfort. We are not so concerned whether it is composting or not, whether it is functioning as composting. What we observe is whether the cows are comfortable dry. So in reality, what we do is provide bedding for them. It might resemble a free stall more than composting. Yes, yes, because we don't measure temperature, humidity, and all that to keep the bed functioning as composting. We just check if the cows are clean. And what about somatic cell count, SCC? Yes, here we are. Approximately between 285,000 and 320,000 somatic cells per milliliter. It's a big challenge and we are looking to improve this 
with some genetic enhancement, and we also need to improve some facilities. Besides, the fact that we only have two milkings per day with high-producing cows sometimes affects this aspect. And here, do they pay for quality? Yes, they pay for quality and for solids. Here, there are price ranges according to the quality and the amount of solids present in the milk. And, for example, what is the maximum SCC allowed here for milk collection? The industry itself has several categories, meaning... To explain it another way, the highest quality is below 250,000 somatic cells per milliliter, and from there, it increases. For example, above 400,000 is already very bad, meaning this greatly influences the price. And how about the genetics? Do you buy animals from other herds? No, here we are now experimenting with a, a new mechanism with all the genomic aspects that exist and so on. Here... We use Canadian semen and American semen. We try not to buy animals. We aim to keep everything within the same herd. Moreover, now with the use of sexed semen, we have a surplus of heifers. Currently, we have about 400 heifers. Last year, we bought some embryos in Canada from selected cows, which we can see over there. There are some calves born. What we mainly seek is to improve the solids and continue reducing the size of the cows. Since we have a management base that includes pasture, sometimes we intensify a bit more, sometimes a bit less. This also depends on the grain price ratio. For example, if grains are very expensive and we have a forage base, we try to use it. So we also look for slightly smaller cows that consume less feed. But at the same time, if they are placed in a compost barn, or on a confined diet, they respond as if they were in a free stall. The difference is that they are smaller cows, not those giant American cows weighing 750 kilos. Those larger cows, when grazing, have difficulty walking a kilometer in the summer heat. We aim to gradually increase comfort, comfort for the cows, comfort for the heifers. And we manage the capacities we have to provide that comfort. Here, for example, that barn you see over there has a capacity for 100 cows. Currently, it houses the first calf heifers at 24 months. That is, it's the group of heifers. Then we have another barn where they eat in headlocks with a capacity for 250 to 300 cows. If we want to keep them fully confined. And then we can have another group on pasture with about 150 cows. So the capacity to provide comfort does not exceed 400, 450 cows, something like that, so that they have shade throughout the year, which is the main thing, especially during times of heat stress. What is the maximum temperature that it reaches here? The temperature can reach 45 degrees. What happens here, the big problems we have are, for example, maybe the monthly average is 35 degrees. But, for example, if a heat wave comes with 45 degrees, with uh, humidity and everything else, and if the cows don't have shade or a place to seek refuge, we start having abortions, all the problems that come with that, besides a drop in production, of course. Since we started using the barns, the, the improvement has been quite significant. This improvement is partly due to the infrastructure and partly due to the feeding, right? Because by improving comfort, you also improve the feed offered. And by improving the feed, I mean, it's not that everything is due to what was done. Part of it is the growth in feeding. For example, there's an impact of about eight or nine liters. But of those eight or nine, maybe seven are due to the improvement in the feed you provided. Well, I took the course in 2021. I think it was in 2022. Uh, actually, I don't remember exactly. I wanted to take it because I wanted to learn a bit more and see the technologies being used in the United States. Learn to use the NASEM and all the techniques involved. The truth is, it has been very useful for formulating diets and dealing with many aspects of management. How to read the feeders, assess barn capacities, formulate diets, and many other things that have been very useful to us. Formulating feeds for the calves 
detecting symptoms in the cows when there's a problem. And well, it has allowed us to simplify many tasks, do everything more economically and increase efficiency, and also have many tools to assess how the cows are doing and make comparisons. For example, the efficiency of feed use, fat corrected milk, or energy corrected milk. And these are tools that I believe are very powerful to make this work. And at the same time, we have a group with whom we maintain a fluid dialogue because the realities of each country are not the same. And many times when we see what we can improve or when we have doubts, we consult during the live classes. That's very good. Really, I encourage people to take it. It's technical work. There's a lot to learn. This is something continuous. You always have to study. It doesn't matter how many master's degrees you have or how many things you've done. You have to keep studying. And that seems fundamental to me, super useful.